So the next session for the day is the indigenization in the armed forces. Atmanirbhar by our Prime Minister has made a lot of indigenization in our armed forces and this is going to help us and this session is going to help the MSMEs to know, have a good knowledge of what are the products which the, which the armed forces require. So the first session, this session the first speaker would be Colonel Anshul Chabra. He is a director of indigenization committee, armored vehicles, director of indigenization army headquarters at New Delhi. The stage is yours sir. Good morning all. Okay, uh, at the outset, uh, on behalf of uh, Brigadier Salesh Unyal, the Brig Indigenization, Directorate of Indigenization, Master General of Staff, Indian Army, I first of all thank the organizers to give us a platform here to give access to the processes of indigenization. And also, I welcome you all, the MSMEs, the industry, to participate in this event. As we all know, seeing the large land borders and the uh, import structure of defense infrastructure in the, in the Indian Army, we, we remain the second largest importer in the world. And uh, now as per the SIPRI latest uh, study, we are the largest importer in March. And to give to my new friends who are sitting in the last benches, the latest startups, latest MSMEs who want to participate, to give them a procurement paradigm perspective. When the defense forces buy, they buy in two forms. One is a capital procurement and one is a revenue procurement. When I say capital procurement, the Directorate General of Capability Development, they ensure, they procure, they provide the new equipment right away. Entire equipment, whether aircrafts, whether tanks, whether guns, for the modernization of Indian Army or the Air Force or the Navy. Whereas, I am part of MGS, uh, in Directorate of Indigenization, who sustain the Indian Army through three major things. Who sustain the present equipment which has been procured by the DGCD. Three things are there. One is to procure those spares, second is the engineering support philosophy like how to maintain, how to maintain the present fleet and third to procure the future capabilities. So what are we here for? The import orientation of uh, the Indian Army and the role of the uh, MGS brings us to the next slide which is the role, the capability, the charter of Directorate of Indigenization which is to carry out the indigenization of the imported spears. Whether we do it directly, direct indigenization, or for those spears which we are not able, OFs, ODs, uh, ordnance factories are not able to provide us. So that is also our charter. So mi mix up, make in India, along with the sustainment requirement. Then what is the purpose? So for uh, the new MSMEs and startups, after I finish this uh, next 15 minutes talk, we should be able to clarify these queries. That is, what are the Indianization agencies in the Indian Army? The procedure, a brief procedure which is being followed for the development. What are the routes available to the vendors, to the industries, to the partners? A brief about the stages of the development. How do we facilitate the vendors, the firms, the industries? And lastly, how do we come to know the indigenization requirements? To start with, there are three major agencies which carry out the indigenization in the Indian Army. The first one, as it is flashed, the ADB, that is the Army Design Bureau. Army Design Bureau takes part of all the, through the capital route, all the technology and the new capability developments. Whereas, Directorate of Indigenization, as I already told, it takes care of the sustenance requirements through the revenue route. Last but not the least, the army based workshops, they are carrying out the overhauls. And when they are carrying out the overhauls, whatever spares presently are coming from uh, the foreign countries, they try to indigenize them through 
local vendors. As is DPM available in the open source, the slide shows in very brief what is the procedure for procurement. It is governed by the chapter 15 of DPM. Now to uh, apprise you, we are also in the process of a common defense indigenization manual which will have all the parameters incorporated. So at forums like such defense expos, we identify the items or we get the items requirement from the ordnance depots. We go ahead and generate specifications through drawings also and the quality assurance inspection guides. Uh, my friend who is accompanying me, Lieutenant Colonel Dheera Dhiman, is uh, one of the OIC's DSWs at Pune. So they, I mean, help the vendors uh, in doing that. Subsequently, we identify the development part partners at past part of the process and frame the RFP as is the usual route. After framing the uh, RFPs, we upload it. We go ahead with the technical evaluation and if required, the commercial negotiations. And we conclude a contract for DOI. As part of the contract, once the, uh, uh, once the product is developed, then we go in for an inspection note and then uh, follow the process of post-contract management up to a free flow. After free flow, the orders are good to go for the, uh, by the ordnance depots to place an order on the firm. This is an interesting uh, slide uh, for my friends. There are two routes available. One is an open tender, that is the RFP route. A transparent system uploaded on the defense procurement portal. Also, only one vendor is not identified. We, somehow, we sometimes go in for a parallel development, wherein the development cost is also paid to the vendors. We have that provision. I will come to that a little later also in very brief. And successful future order is given to the firm. In this RFP route, uh, the payment is done by the Government of India. However, there is a second route available. If a product is already ready with you guys, then with commitment clause or without commit commitment clause, that can be done. That is a shortened route in which cost is no, though not paid to the firms. However, commitment can be given for successful development. How do we facilitate the industry? Uh, while speaking to the vendors, they say, Ki, what is the commitment to us? So what we do as part of the DOI, last five years procurement cycle of the ordnance depots is taken into consideration and 20% of the cost is taken as a prototype cost and EOQ is decided. The balance 80 to 70% is I mean, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the order is placed on the vendor through the ordnance depots. So there is general misconception that no, no, no cost is paid or full cost is paid or not. So this is how we facilitate the industry. Full transparency is incorporated through equitable treatment through all the uh, defense procurement port portals. Gone are the days where they, somebody had to come speak under the table so uh, gone are those old days. So we often get uh, those queries by the vendors. More often out of 100 vendors, what we have spoken, nearly 50 to 60 vendors have come to me and spoken about the transparency in the system. So we assure you that. Subsequently, DOI doesn't require any separate registration. If you are already working with DGQA or you have worked with the National uh, uh, Small Industries Corporation, you are endorsed there. You are ready to go ahead. Even if there is no registration, we can collaborate. Next, the small scale industries. As per the provisions uh, in the MSMEs, no EMD is required. Similarly, like I said earlier, all our uh, drawing and specification wings, there is a provision that at the inception stage only, we do a pre-bid meeting where we can interact with vendors, we can interact in Delhi, where all the drawing specs, the process, the procedures are shared and discussed with the firms. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a provision like there's a new firm. He needs to establish an industry line, needs to establish uh, a, a die, some other infrastructure, little infrastructure. For that, there are provisions existing to provide the development cost to the vendors.
वन मोर थिंग ऑल दी ड्रॉइंग्स हार्ड कॉपी सॉफ्ट कॉपीज आर मेड अवेलेबल एंटायरली फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट नो कॉस्ट इन्वॉल्व बाय द वेंडर्स इन दिस वन मोर क्लेरिफिकेशन एज फार एज द वेपन सिस्टम्स आर कंसर्नड सम देर इज अ इनहिबिशन विद द वेंडर्स दैट हु विल बोन द कॉस्ट फॉर द फायरिंग ट्रायल्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन लेट मी क्लियर इट दैट द कॉस्ट बोन द कॉस्ट फॉर द फायरिंग ट्रायल्स इज बोन बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया so uh, that inhibition by some of the vendors especially from south india needs to be clarified subsequently when the items have been declared free flow then only the depots can go ahead with the procurement so once the trials happen we issue a inspection note and the process goes ahead up to the uh, stage of free flow after free flow ordnance depots can place the orders on you Simult by that time already 20 to 25 percent of the order cost is being made by the uh, the money is been paid by the CDA to you. So what are we doing for that awareness and mapping? I must mention hand holding of industries, mutual sharing of data, and sustainable development of both the government of India and the firms is the mantra. Not but not uh, last but not the least. the success stories i will just flash few of these stories along with the names of the vendors which have happened successful and it is for the young entrepreneurs to have a look the track assemblies of the shilka system tangushka system the main battle tank of the indian army on your right top the t90 bottom left right a uh, bottom left is the engine six filter power pack system of the new tank indigenized tank mbt arjun that has been just declared as indigenized similarly we have uh, pcbs for the bofors recently indigenized side gear box if uh, people have visited the indian army stall there is a new indigenization requirement of the side gear box of the tank t90 to apprise the audience the uh, side gear box of t72 has been uh, recently indigenized by bemel these are some of the pcbs bofors remote operating vehicle and the atgms along with that the ones who are interested the uh, uh, mechanical and uh, pressure assemblies the valves the hydraulic pumps Faridabad Gurgaon earlier we have some firms coming from Coimbatore the participation is limited though that's why we are here the rocket launchers developed by RCI Hyderabad and the RTMET system so we have moved forward from small nuts bolt spears to now platforms so my young friends if you are a firm with a design and development capability specialized manufacturing capability r&d assets so you please tell us about your capability and your requirement at the email id flashed to sum up uh, today on a momentous occasion i stand here on the teachers day on the soil of uh, our previous president dr abdul kalam and uh, uh, those words come forward i quote mentors are the backbone of any country the pillars upon which all aspirations are converted into realities and i think uh, we you the organizers we are all here for that and let's collaborate together to make india from the largest importer to the largest exporter of defense equipment and technology so thank you so much and jai hind any queries i would like to take on any uh, specific things process though we are uh, just 5 meters away are stall but uh, any common things i can take on sir good morning i am dheeraj uh, just wanted to know you have mentioned about uh, claim development cost provision for claim development cost if you can just elaborate upon this particular thing sir. Uh, can i know your i mean specific yes. Uh, sir, in this and if you can give me first introduction about yes, your company. 
Yes, uh, I'm from Renewable Energy Systems Limited and we manufacture thermal batteries, sir, which are customized for the missile usage. And uh, we develop customized products. So just wanted to know upon this development cost, basically. See, uh, uh, the thing is like already, as I told you that we are doing, we are indigenizing these spares, which are already there in the inventory of Indian Army. Now, for example, uh, uh, you hone your, uh, you hone in some particular field, but uh, here is a spare which you think that you can manufacture, but you don't have a die, you don't have a, a machine for that. So, if that uh, uh, order is taken by you, and we sit together after the technical evaluation, and you say that this will be the cost involved, I cannot invest in that. So, we can also provide the development cost to the development partner to make the dies for your, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, some technical literature, some limited research. So the government pays for that in the open route. Sir, in, in this case, just wanted to know, this is at which stage? Uh, after RS, RFP, we express, it is at EOI stage, what you are mentioning? Sir, in the uh, initial stage only, we would have told you with the RFP uploading that what is the requirement? And uh, you will be bidding, when you will be bidding, you will be bidding for the main uh, cost of the item and the development cost. And when the technical evaluation will happen, obviously negotiations happen, so it will happen on the development cost and the original product cost. So you Manufacturing mean, cost, if I should say. So uh, I will be entitled for the development cost if I am L1, basically. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. Sir. If you want me to... Uh, Sir, okay, sir yeah. please. Yeah, I'm Kamado Bala, uh, Director CISR, Center for Indigenization and self reliance Please sit down, please sit down. So uh, there is something called uh, already items available off the shelf, Scott's item and other items called uh, developmental items. That is, it's not available uh, commercially outside and you have to develop. When we are taking up the indigenization route, uh, there is a provision. We call it or we term it as a developmental cost and the production cost. So for the development cost, okay, we'll just uh, factor in. Maybe it may be much more than the the production cost itself. That include it includes what are the intricacies involved in that one. Okay, whether it is your uh, technical know-how, your uh, expertise on that field, your uh, dyes, your other manufacturing processes. All these things will be built in, and that will be termed as a production uh, developmental cost. And the normal material cost, labor cost, and all those things will be put into the production cost. So uh, when we are uh, uh, sending out the RFP or SOTR, okay, all these things will be included. Okay, you have to quote separately for both. But when you are considered as L1, both the things will be put together, it will be considered. And during the negotiation table, both the things can be uh, negotiated and we can come to a common conclusion. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, uh, just one more query, sir. Will, suppose I am L1, sir. Uh, will I be paid the development cost in the beginning itself? Uh, in the open route, you will be paid by the CDA only once the product is uh, deemed to be successful. Okay, sir. My next question is, suppose the development cost is huge and for a small SME, MSME, how can I uh, get funds towards development? Please come again. Suppose I am a MSME and the development cost is huge. The dyes and all these things are costly. Although I have got credentials, capability and all these things, how do I get that kind of money to invest in this? Now, this is a very subjective question. Uh, the first thing is, if you want to invest in something, obviously, uh, you would have heard uh, yesterday, uh, country union bank speaking. So you will be assembling uh, everything through the bank loans. And when I will place an order on you, obviously, uh, more other firms will also be participating. So if your debt development cost will be so high, you will not be part of the L1 or L2 maybe. So I cannot answer your question that for development to assemble that line, I will not be able because I am a user. I will not be providing you the development cost for that. Yes, once you have participated in the bid, you have become a L1, then when your comparison is made with other vendors, obviously then the negotiation will start. So I answer your question in two things. If you want to assemble a new line, you go to the bank first, you take uh, I mean loans for that, and once you uh, 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 participate in a bid, then only we can discuss all these issues because it remains subjective. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much. Please. Thank you so much, sir. I request uh, Commodore Vasan to do the honors. Thank you, Colonel Chabra, for your wise presentation. 